Imagine the following scenario. You have a red glove. You look at it and it's red. You confirm that it's red. But then you decide to stick in your hand in the glove to find out if it's a right hand or a left hand. And when you look at the color again, the glove changed color. What on earth happened? Well, this is not gonna happen in real life, but you will be surprised to see that in the quantum realm, this kind of phenomenon can happen. I'm Luis Serrano and today I will tell you about the quantum glove that changes color. So let's start with this guy over here, Erwin Schrodinger. He's a genius Nobel Prize winning physicist who came up with many things, among others, the thought experiment of Schrodinger's cat. And the experiment goes like this. Let's say we have a cat and it's inside a box and it's purely theoretical, so no animals were harmed during the making of this experiment. And the box is tied to some random event like radioactive decay or something like that. It doesn't really matter. The fact is this is something that could go on or off randomly and that would activate some kind of poison that would kill the cat. So with probability one half the cat will die and with probability one half the cat will be alive. Now here is what Schrodinger said which is very strange. He said the cat is not dead or alive. It's in a dead alive superposition because this state over here is in an on off superposition. So the cat is neither dead or alive. It's in some sort of superposition of both. And it's only when we look at it that it pretty much makes up its mind or the universe makes up its mind. And then it's either dead or alive. In this case, we're happy to see that it's alive. Now, how strange is that? Because we have two options. The option is that the cat is already dead or already alive, and we just simply don't know. So when we look at it, then we find out. But we're a passive observer. We don't change the cat by looking at it. We just find out. The universe already knows if it's dead or alive. And what Schrodinger says is that no, 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 the cat is dead and alive at the same time in a superposition. And when we look at it, we're not a passive observer, we are an active observer that actually makes the universe somehow decide if the cat is dead or alive. So he says the observer not only observes, the observer changes things by observing them, which sounds kind of crazy. And in today's experiment, I will show you an argument that actually leaves no other room than to thinking that perhaps this is the case. But here's what's strange. If I flip a coin and I haven't seen the coin, then the coin is heads or tails and I just have to find out how weird it is to think that the coin is in both things at the same time and the universe doesn't know. The universe knows. It's a bit arrogant to think that if I don't know, then the universe doesn't know. Well, it turns out that for quantum particles, the universe doesn't know. Or at the very least, that's what the experiments point to. But here's the thing. How do we even know that it's going to be in a superposition and not in one of the events if when we look at it, it makes up the mind and it's consistent. It stays like it is. If I see the coin and its heads, the coin stains heads forever. So how do I know that it wasn't heads before? Well, let me introduce you to the quantum glove experiment. This one is way stranger than the Schrodinger's cat experiment. And in here we have the following. We have a box and in the box we have a glove. The glove could be red or could be blue and also it could be right hand or left hand. So it could be four things, a right hand red, a left hand red, a right hand blue and a left hand blue. But we don't know what it is. So it could be that it's in some kind of superposition. That's my claim that it's in a superposition, even though you may think, well, it's already red or blue. It's already right or left. But I say no in a superposition. And here's what happens. We can look at the color or we can look at the orientation, but not at the same time. So how do we look at the color? Well, we can open a little hole in the box and then check the color of the glove. And let's say it's red. So we don't know the orientation, but we know the color. That's one observation. The other observation we can make is stick a hole. And with our eyes closed, we put the hand in and out. And without looking at the color, we can touch it and figure out that it's, for example, a right hand. Now here's where the experiment gets strange. Let's say you looked at the color and it's red. Now let's say you stuck in your hand and you realize that it's a right hand. You're gonna go back and confirm the color and oh surprise, the color is blue. Now why did that happen? So obviously it's not gonna happen with a real glove, but with quantum particles, something very strange makes this phenomenon completely possible. So let's see what's happening behind the scenes. And for that, we have to learn what a qubit is. So I like to think of a bit 
as this thing over here, which is kind of like an on off switch. The bit can be on and we're gonna call on zero for some reason and we're gonna call off one. And so the bit can be in one of those two states and that's it. Computers are made by billions and trillions of these bits over here. Now quantum computers are built with qubits and a qubit's a little more strange. It's more like a slider where you can have fully on, fully off, but anything in the middle. So we're gonna call the zero, the on, the one, the off, but you can have anything in between. You can have a 50-50 superposition, a 75-25 superposition, a 25-75, you can have 67% and 33% on and off, anything you want. So basically the qubit can be in any of these states all the way from zero to one, but actually it's a little stranger than that. Imagine that it's not a light switch with a slider, but it's actually a spherical light switch. And you have some dot, some dial that you can put pretty much anywhere in your sphere. If the dot is at the very top, then the light is fully on. If the dot is at the very bottom, then the light is fully off and it can be in the middle too, anywhere on that equator, the light is half on, half off. And based on how high or low it is, it's more on than off. So if it's over here, it's let's say 80% on and 20% off. And if it's here, it's the opposite, 20% on and 80% off, and it can just be anywhere. So as you can see, there's many ways to get the same superposition because you can be in the entire circle, in the entire parallel. That's a representation of a qubit and that's called block sphere. Now, a fundamental property of qubits is that you can measure them. How do we measure them? Now, let's say that this is our qubit over here represented by the block sphere. The North Pole has the alive cat state and the South Pole has the dead cat state. And our green dot there, which is in that parallel, shows a state that is in a superposition of they're alive, but it's actually more alive than dead because it's closer to the North Pole. So how do we look at this qubit? When we look at this qubit, we're measuring it. And the way I like to think of it is you have some magnets. You put a red magnet on the North Pole and a blue magnet on the South Pole, and that magnet is going to pull that green dot. Now, the closer the dot is to the North Pole, the most likely that it's gonna go to the North Pole, but it still has a probability of getting pulled by the blue magnet and ending up in the South Pole. So if it gets pulled by red, then boom, now the cat is fully alive and the qubit is North Pole state zero. But if it gets pulled by the blue magnet, then the cat is dead. And the height represents what kind of superposition we have. Do we have more alive than dead or more dead than alive? And the probabilities of getting measured as one or zero are given by how high you are. So let's say that this one over here, the probability that it's alive is fully one. So the North Pole state is completely deterministic. If it's in the North Pole and we measure it, it stays in the North Pole. And as we go down, then the probability of the cat being alive is smaller and smaller all the way to zero. If it's in the South Pole, it stays in the South Pole. So the only two deterministic cases are North Pole or South Pole. Anything else has some probability of going to the North Pole and some probability of going to the South Pole. Now here's something interesting, which is that measurement is consistent. So once I look at the cat and it's alive, if I keep looking at it, it's still alive. If we look at it with coins, let's say I have a coin here that when I flip it, I land it on heads because it's more likely. And once it lands on heads, now it's in the North Pole. So if I keep looking at it, if I keep measuring with those magnets, it's gonna stay heads, heads, heads. So it's consistent. So here's where I get reluctant because why is it gonna be a superposition if it could have just been heads the whole time? And so the strange thing happens when you can start measuring with different bases. What do I mean by bases? Well, that North Pole, South Pole is a basis and I can put my magnets anywhere I want as long as I put them in antipodal points in this sphere. So I can put them here, I can put them here, wherever I want. So let's say I put them there. Now, where is the green dot gonna go? Well, now what matters is not the parallels, but any circle that is perpendicular to the line between the two magnets. And the probability of the green dot going to the red magnet is based on how close it is to the red magnet. In this case, it still has a probability, although small, to go to the blue magnet. So now we need to look at the sphere like this. And this measurement with different bases is what makes everything very, very strange. Because take a look at this. Let's say that the North Pole state represents a red glove. I don't know if it's a right hand or left hand, it just represents red. 
The South Pole represents blue, so I don't know if it's right or left, it's simply a blue glove. Now the state at the very right represents a right hand. I don't know if it's red or blue, it represents the right hand. And the state at the very left represents the left hand, again I don't know if it's red or blue. So in other words, how high you are represents the color and how right left you are represents the right hand or the left hand. And let's say that because the dot is here, I have a superposition of red and blue and a superposition of right and left. This is more right than left and more red than blue because it's more to the right and more up. Now let's see what happens when I apply the two measurements. When I apply the first measurement, I open a little hole. I'm only looking at the color. So I put my magnets on the top and the bottom. And let's say it went to the top. It's a red glove. So when I look, the color is red. And indeed it's red, it's consistent red. If I look a hundred times, I will see it red a hundred times because it's in the North Pole. So I'm led to think that the glove is red. Now, if I have my superposition like this and instead of measuring color, I want to measure right hand or left hand, then what I do is I don't measure with this basis, I measure with this basis over here. So when I stick in my hand, it's the equivalent of putting two magnets in the right and the left, and then the little green dot goes to either the right or the left with some probability. So let's say you went to the right with a higher probability. And so I conclude that it's a right hand glove. And it's consistent. If I keep sticking my hand, it keeps being a right hand glove because once you're at the right, that magnet on the right is gonna pull it with 100% probability. But now the weird thing happens when I measure using different bases and I alternate the bases. So let's say I first look at the color and I'm in that superposition over there. So when I look at the color, I put the magnets top and bottom and the green dot goes to the top, indicating that it's a red glove. Now I'm gonna check the orientation. So I'm gonna stick in my hand and that means I put two magnets like this and then the dot goes, let's say, to the right. So I have a right hand glove. But notice something interesting. When I measure the orientation, I destroyed the color. The glove is no longer red. Now it's back to a superposition of red and blue. And now when I'm gonna check the color again, I need to put magnets on top and bottom, but my qubit is now in a superposition because now the glove is in a superposition of red and blue. So I could measure red, but with 50% probability, I could measure blue. And so look at what happened. First, the glove was red, but when I checked what the orientation it was, I ruined the color. I went back to a superposition of red and blue. And once I went back, then I could easily measure a blue with 50% probability. So this is very bizarre. It shows that if you measure with different bases, you actually have no other choice than to think that perhaps the superposition thing is true. Maybe something more strange happens, but at the very least, you can't really think of the glove as deterministic, as a red or blue glove, as a right hand or left hand. You kind of force to think that the glove is in some weird superposition. Because here's the interesting part. One observation messes up the other observation. So we are led to think that perhaps the observer is way more active than we think it is. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to quantum physics, but I wanted to give you a little appetizer on how the more you get into it, the more bizarre it is. Over the next few videos, I'm gonna keep showing you some very strange behaviors in quantum physics and how to use them to our advantage in quantum computing. So stay tuned. Now I would really like to thank my sponsors. They helped me for the making of this video and they helped me do what I love, which is share my knowledge with the world. If you like this video, I encourage you to follow me on my YouTube channel or even join the channel. If you join the channel, you can get some perks like early access to videos, monthly Q and A's with me and your name on the videos. You can also join on Patreon and support me. You can follow me on Twitter, Serrano Academy, or check out my page, serrano.academy, where I have courses and a lot more information. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.